In this top of video, we're going to spend a few minutes thinking about long run production and returns to scale. So long run production, well, it's a time period when all of the factors of production are variable in the long run. And uh, in theory, this allows the firm to change the scale and the capacity of production and hopefully achieve economies of scale, such as seen here in, the, in the industrial farming and in renewable energy. So in economics, the long run is a period of time when a firm, a business, can adjust all of its inputs to produce a desired level of output. They can change their productive capacity by adding a bigger workforce, by adding to their capital stock, and by adding to the, uh, the quantity of technology available. Now, unlike the short run, where at least one factor is fixed, the long run allows a business to fully adapt to changes in its environment and hopefully optimise its production process to bring down unit cost. Long run returns to scale is an important idea. It refers to the relationship between changes in a firm's output and the corresponding changes in unit cost in the long run. So basically, it's how the, a change in the firm's scale, how much labour and capital raw materials it uses, affects its cost efficiency. There are three main types of returns to scale. Increasing returns to scale is where output rises more than proportionate to input. And if that happens, average costs will fall. Constant returns is when output rises in proportion, in proportion to input. And that means perhaps the firm has reached its optimal scale, the unit cost stays the same. And we also have decreasing returns. The firm experiencing decreasing returns, its output rises less than proportionate to input, leading to diseconomies of scale and an increase in the average cost per unit of output. So here's a quick example. The firm here has a quantity of capital on the left-hand side, units of labour, and we're given a table showing the total output results. You can work out the percentage change in inputs as we go through. So we double from 20 to 40, 100% change, from 40 to 60, 50% change, and so on. So we're adding 20 units of capital in each row there, although the percentage change in inputs is falling because, of course, the denominator is getting bigger. And we can also work out the percentage change in output, 150, 60, 33, and 13. Now, once you have the change in inputs and percentages, and you have the change in output and percentages, you can then talk about returns to scale. If output rises at a faster rate than input, we have increasing returns to scale. Two examples there from 20 to 40, 40 to 60. But when we go from 60 to 80 units of capital, uh, returns to scale are constant because there's been a one third increase in both labor and capital input. Output's risen by the same percentage. And you can see when we go from 80 to 100 on units of capital and 600 to 750 on units of labor, inputs have gone up by a quarter, 25%. Output's only gone up uh, by 2,000 units, but it's gone up uh, to by just by 13%, decreasing returns. So when we have increasing returns to scale in the long run, average cost falls. When we have constant returns to scale, in the long run, average cost remains the same. And when we have decreasing returns to scale, average cost goes up. And we call that diseconomies of scale. A quick video there on long run production and returns to scale.